Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to episode 969. And uh, today we're going to talk more about what I said yesterday about grief and loss and moving on. Um, yesterday I was talking about a friend being a friend's memorial who passed away a couple of weeks earlier. Shot out of the blue, wasn't known about. Today, if you're in LA, you've heard the news um, that Kobe Bryant passed away. And not somebody I knew, just to be clear, I'm not speaking from personal experience. But I want to speak about the topic because I saw so many people this morning at Agape in deep distress. And understandably so, because some of these people knew him, some were just loyal fans, some just had a sense of relationship to him. A friend of mine, she knew him through some corporate stuff. So I'm not going to talk about that directly, as in him, but I want to speak about the idea of, or I should say, what I want to speak is the grief process, and also how to be yourself during that time. Now, if you've seen my broadcast before, excuse me, itchy. If you've seen my broadcast before, you know, talk a lot about love and relationships and about self support and self honoring. And this topic's going to be more towards that latter part than the first part, although you might have that experience in a relationship with loss. And also, because I'm aware this is not just applicable to people dying, just to be clear, because this can also apply to relationships ending or jobs ending or some other transformational traumatic experience. So, hopefully, what I'm offering today will give you assistance in whatever you're dealing with and maybe even some next steps you can take to redirect yourself the way you want to be. So first of all, I want to speak to the idea that when we experience loss with somebody, let's speak about human loss for the moment, how it empower, it, it, it in, oh, what's the word? Not encourages the wrong word. It informs us that maybe there's more we can do. Not for them, but for ourselves. Because the thing that comes to mind for me immediately on this situation is, and for a lot of people I know this is true too, that when somebody is suddenly taken from us by an accident, by an illness, by whatever it is, we often get the feeling of, I need to do better. Like, I need to make a mark. I need to leave a legacy. I need to do something. Because we don't know what's going to happen to anybody. I mean, if you know the day you're going to die, you're in a very rare group. But most of us don't. So the question that becomes is, how do you want to live your life now? Now, this is a big ask, I know, because for a lot of people, the idea of living life at the best is not easy. But can you put your focus towards something that is of a contributory nature? However big or small that is, can you be in a place where, I talked about this yesterday, I think I talked about it yesterday, and by the way, just referencing yesterday's broadcast, and, and but let me sidebar again, before <laughs> yesterday's broadcast and beyond that. Um, this is, in case you didn't see, was episode 969. I've done a bunch of these talks. I do this every day over three years. So yesterday, I was talking about the experience of being at my friend's memorial service and the, and the wonderful gifts that came out of that. But today, I want to speak about this as a general topic because for LA people especially, there's been a big impact because we lost a great one today. And I've seen a lot of posts already. I mean, from this morning when it happened, of friends have posts of people and especially the fact that I now know, apparently, at least eight or nine people I know who directly knew him, actually had pictures with him, so I know they were impacted by his, his loss. So my invitation in this, first of all, is this can be a reminder to you of stepping into your greatness, since that was his strength, that was his demonstration, that was his legacy, to be of a bigger, that's the wrong word, no, of a, of a stronger awareness of the fact that what you have to give is better than you know. So as I mentioned, contribution, but the recognition is that what you are contributing isn't necessarily some big multi-million dollar fundraising thing like he was doing. It could be the fact that you're nicer to your neighbors. I mean, it sounds simple, but to do something of that activity where you are contributing to those around you in a positive way, maybe it's smiling at that grungy person across the street or to let somebody else in traffic, I'm talking small stuff, but if it becomes a way of life for you, it becomes an opportunity for you of a way of stepping forward to be more gracious in your life. That's honoring those people who have passed. And I'm, that, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> I'm watching myself here. Part of what we do in our lives after someone passes is we do things in our life in honor of that person that passed. Now, I'm not saying it has to be that way, but it's an invitation, an encouragement, and a suggestion because we always have the opportunity to do something different than we've done before. It's easy in this human experience 
So sometimes get down on ourselves and think that life is treating us badly, whatever's going on or whatever's in the way. But if you carry the thought about somebody else who may be transitioned, maybe it's a family member, maybe a mother or a parent or a sibling. I mean, my mother passed away in 2012, so I carry that inside me still every day. And having that loss inside, that sense of missing that person, can be an encouragement to get ourselves out of our own funk. It can actually work as a, surprisingly so, there's an opportunity to step into something greater where we can actually contribute. Now, yes, let me speak to grief for a moment because it's one of the big pieces. Grief is something I, I got to study in my spiritual practices. And grief is something that isn't talked about very much. But something to be aware of with grief is grief is a, um, oh, sorry, bump my screen. Grief is a automatic, that's what I'm putting it, component of the recovery after experiencing loss. That sounds about right. Grief is basically, is grief happens. If you go through a loss of some sort, and again, it doesn't have to be a death of somebody close to you, it could be the loss of a job, loss of a house, a loss of a, a relationship. Grief can happen. Quite often, in fact, it does. It comes to different degrees because of different experiences, and grief is normally corresponding to the amount of emotional investment, attachment, and, and connection there was. So, somebody close to you lose, the grief can be much greater than somebody who you read about in the news. Sounds quite obvious, but that's the reality of it. Grief is something we experience. Now, in the journey of grief, it is not a roadmap. Grief, in fact, one of the challenges of grief for most of us human beings is it's not predictable. Grief is, I was going to say, it's trying to kind of quote Forrest Gump. Grief is as grief does. No, it's kind of a mad quote, but the thing about it is, and I experienced it when I was studying in this and some books I can recommend. Um, one is the Grief Recovery Handbook by, by, one author's name was Cherry, last name. The other one author was, I can't remember offhand. There's also a book about grief by the Levines. Um, oh, oh boy, the names. I studied this stuff like 15 years ago, so it's not really fresh in my mind. Anyway, there are books about grief you can study, but here's the thing. Grief is a, un, it's, as I said, no roadmap. But grief has basically five components to it most of the time. But those five components, which include anger, resentment, resignation, um, guilt, well, actually, well, actually it's more than five when I think about it. There's different aspects, but also there's, make, there's five main components. But the thing about grief is, first of all, those five steps are not in sequence any time. They're not in any particular sequence, so they have, you know, they do. And then there's no duration on them. Like grief does not have a fixed duration or a fixed order. It does what it does, and you have no choice, seriously, if you want to grow and heal from it, you have no choice but to succumb to the grief process in its majesty. I'm saying majesty for a reason. Because a lot of us, grief looks like a bad thing. So it's tragedy, we should be sad, should be upset. There's a beauty and magnificence and a majesty to grief that actually puts you back together again. Grief is an amazing transformational journey that isn't pretty, isn't easy, and I know I've been through it myself. But what it does is it gives us back to ourselves because the ultimate thing we remember is, is love. Grief really can only happen when something you love was lost. A person, experience, relationship, whatever that is. So to look at grief as a bad thing is a bad is a mistake. Grief actually is no 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 two ways about it. Grief can be painful, absolutely. But also grief is healing when you're willing to dive into it fully. And when you give yourself over to grief, it will happen faster because grief takes longer when you hold it back, when you avoid it, resent it, or, or suppress it. Grief happens more gracefully when you don't fight it. So here's a, that's a tip, to, by the way. So if you're dealing with grief from any relationship or any loss, don't avoid the grief. Be willing to dive in. Be willing to be humbled by it. I'm using special words because I want to make sure you get the grief is not something simple. It's also not something bad. It's not something to look forward to by any means, but it's something that happens to all of us at different times. If we love something and we lose it, grief happens, whatever that is for you. So my encouragement to you is, first of all, as I said, is contribution. The second part is grief, as in honoring grief. The third piece is Simply put, 
to take care of yourself. I mean, every broadcast I talked about for the last several years, I always end them by saying, you know, please take care of yourself. Well, that's not just superfluous words. It's a, it's a life-changing skill. When you learn to consciously take care of yourself, actively, intentionally, and fully take care of yourself, then you become a more whole person. And in that process, you become able to give more easily, so you get to contribute. You get to face whatever comes up emotionally with honesty and integrity and humility. And it also makes you a much, much better partner in a relationship. Because when you take care of yourself, it is not, it's not up to the other person. It's one of the most fundamental skills I can teach you about how to be a better relationship partner, is taking care of yourself first. And in fact, when you take care of yourself, you become more able to take care of other people because you filled up your own battery first. And that's the thing. A lot about grief and a lot about this loss experience can be very draining energetically because we don't know what to do with it. This is the thing. There's nothing to do with it. Be with it. And I'm being simplistic this way. But be with grief is a healthy thing to do. Be with the loss. Be with those who are also lost. Not to fix them and not to fix yourself, but to be with them present. There's lots of articles written about how to deal with somebody who's going through grief, how to be with them. It's like, bottom line is this. Someone's going through grief, all you can do, all I recommend you do, is be with them and love them. Do not try to fix them. Don't let them, don't try to do anything with them. If they want to share stories, great. If they want to share emotional upset, great. If they want to be okay with it. If they want to be resentful, it's all part of the grief process. Be okay with it. So the next few days I know in LA, there'll be people going through their own journeys with this because it isn't, it's almost like he was an LA icon. Well, he was an LA icon. But this is a reminder to all of us that go through grief, that go through loss, that go through the challenge of losing somebody, is how do we want to deal with it? It's not something that is, is um, repeatable. As I said, it's a unique experience every time. It's, it's a grief is a unique journey as well. There's no structure, there's no timing. It happens the way it happens. Just be with it. And if you're, going through, if you're with somebody who's going through grief, just be with them too. I had an idea of what I was going to talk about today that was different from this, but this is what came up and this is what, because of the news today. So first of all, thank you for watching and appreciate the, being here. If you have any questions, and in fact, if you have any thoughts about this, please share them below in the comments. And I hope that you'll take some of this with you into your life, into your interactions, into your friendships and relationships. It's, I mean, simply put, it's a vital part of life is death. I mean, simply put it. You know, I think, I, I believe it's a Mark Twain quote about something about, um, Something about, uh, there's, there's, two, there's two quotes I'm meshing together. So one of them is about when you're born is, is the, there's something about finding out why you were born. Is the, is the, is the second, oh, damn. I for, I've forgotten the quote. Okay, so I'm trying to make up some quotes that I can't remember. If I remember, I'll put it in the comments afterwards. The other one was about um, the dash. There's a comment about that. It's like to, people are born a certain date and die a certain date. It's up to you what you do with the dash in between. Actually, that's a good quote. I like that one. <laughs> I'm not sure if that one came from. If I remember it, I will. Put the hint in the comments too. So my invitation to you is to consider this for yourself. If you're going through grief, or if you know somebody's going through grief, how do you deal with them? How do you be with them? How do you move on? How do you live with this way? Do not suppress. Do not just move on and skip over. You, it's not healthy. Be willing to honor it, face it, and heal with it. Be humbled by it. It is major. It is magnificent. It is a... What's the word I was looking for? It is a powerful experience, but it's also part of the healing journey. And if you're human, healing is part of the process of getting into be more whole. That's part of my work as well. So I will put some links in the comments, of course. I always do that. Um, Self-love is one of my reminders. I mentioned at the beginning, a part of it is coming back to love. You can't be, you won't have grief unless you have love for something. I should say, if you love something, you can have grief for it. Basically, it means that they go together. So to feel upset by something ending, relationship, job, whatever it is, they won't, you won't care about it if you don't. It's like the way they're saying is you can't be upset about something you, something you don't care about. The same thing's about loving as well. When you um, join the idea put together of loving and grief and it's healthy, then you become more whole. If you have any questions, you want some support, reach out to me, message, message me, send me a note over social media or grab one of the links in the comments. I'll put some links in there too. Um, because it's part of, the, part of the life. Loss is part of life. It's part of the journey, and 
I've learned enough about it to know that I don't know enough about it. <laughs> but hopefully what I've said has helped you. So I welcome your feedback, your thoughts, your questions. If you want support, reach out to me again. There'll be links in the comments. Self-love will be in there for sure because self-love is a key factor in this process as well as a couple of other things you might want to check out. Um, if you are following me and want to find out how to watch my broadcasts, this is my daily Facebook Live. I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. Welcome to join me every day, um, seven days a week. Yes, this is why it's a Sunday broadcast, hence the casual attire. Uh, if you want to watch the replays, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day, as I said. The replays on my personal page get interspersed with other things, so I'd recommend you looking at my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. You can like my page there. There's two or three hundred that are visible there, not all of them, because Facebook doesn't show all of them for some reason. But I do have a backup plan, which is called YouTube. If you go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, there's a, you can subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine, where all of my broadcasts live. You can watch them there. You can search for titles and find what speaks to you. There's quite a lot of topics with 960 plus broadcasts. Um, that's about it for today. This is kind of what I was, I wasn't not sure to talk about today, but then the news informed my talk. So my, my request, as I mentioned earlier, as I always say in my broadcast, is to please take care of yourself. Check out the links, check out my replays, take care of yourself, please. And with that, I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.